in a plasticine. So we can basically make a mold up of anything. The work at the Bronsmith in Prescott Valley is all about making a good impression. Well, make that a perfect impression. Sounds easy enough until you realize just exactly what it takes, especially in this project for a church in Cottonwood. Well, what we're doing is working on a project here where we've taken the old Stations of the Cross from the Catholic Church in Jerome and enlarged them twice the size for the new church in Cottonwood. Uh, these Stations of the Cross are over 120 years old and Andrea is doing an interpretation of the old Station of the Cross in clay. So each one of these pieces was digitally enlarged, but it still has to have the human touch or the sculptor's uh, rendition of how to make it look uh, good in that size. All bronzes begin with an artist original, which in this case was chiseled out of stone. And that first impression is made using a rubber mold. This is the right. artist's work. That's the stone original sculpture. On this side, we've applied rubber and then fiberglass. And when that's done, we'll take this clay wall off and put rubber and fiberglass on this side. Then we open the, the mold up on both sides. We give the stone original sculpture back to the artist and that's what we use. That two halves of the rubber mold is what we use to make our wax patterns. Now that the rubber mold has been finished, Kristen is applying hot wax to the surface to pick up all the detail of the original sculpture. So this is the Boy Scout sculpture we're working on for the town of Prescott, commemorating the 100 year anniversary of scouting. And uh, it's pretty exciting how to see uh, how this comes out of the rubber mold. Now do you reuse that rubber? Yeah, this can be used over 100 times or more. A little physical work here, huh? Yeah, we've got to tug on it a little bit. Okay, let's stand it up. And here you get to see how the rubber peels off of the face of the one of the Boy Scouts. After the wax pattern comes out of the rubber mold, we need to touch up the seam line where the two halves came together. The next stage in the process is what's called gating, and that's what's going to be put inside of a ceramic shell investment. And that's what we'll pour the bronze into. But wait, there's more. Yet another process that might give you that sinking feeling, but in the end makes the final molten pour possible. This final step is called the ceramic shell process. Ceramic shell was invented in the 50s for the aerospace industry. And it wasn't until uh, late 70s and most art foundries had discovered it as being the ideal material to cast bronze sculptures in. And with that perfect impression on the inside, the molten bronze can finally be poured. Of course, some artists may want to add a chemical patina to their work, or a bull's horn may need a little touch-up, but it is certainly all worth it when that melted metal becomes a solid piece of art. Well, thanks for having us up here, Ed. We really, really enjoyed this. We're, you're welcome, Dan. Uh, we're open to the public. We do tours on uh, Thursday mornings at 11 o'clock. We'd like to see people come up and see some of the interesting things that we're working on at Bronsmith.